Yeah, guys, so we just left Rudesheim, Germany. Uh, we actually were moored over there on the, on the right hand side of the river. Well, it's actually not the right hand side of the river. We're going backwards right now, which uh, is interesting. So, uh, uh, we're, for whatever reason, at this minute, we're thrusting backwards probably need to stay to one side of the river and we can't the ship is very large so we can't make a uh, can't make a uh, make a u-turn yet although it looks like that's what we're keying up for back there because we got lookouts in the back but uh, yeah so we're leaving Rudersheim Germany should be in Koblenz in a couple hours and then we're off to do cable cars and fortresses and it'll be a good day a good day for the vlogs Scenic sailing this morning. So we're doing scenic sailing this morning. We have a castle on the hill. As you can see, it's hugely fortified facing the River Rhine. Hugely fortified facing the River Rhine. However, in 1689, Louis XIV traveled along the ridge line behind Richtenstein Castle and destroyed it. 1689, it was destroyed. Once again, uh, just like Rheinstein Castle, it lay in ruins for about 100 years and now is a castle hotel. So this is Richtenstein Castle. Once again, immensely fortified, facing the River Rhine, but not from uh, the hills behind it. So this is Richtenstein Castle. This stone quarry actually belongs to the Netherlands, ladies and gentlemen, this stone quarry. It was given to the Netherlands by Germany uh, to make amends after World War II. So quite strangely here, in the middle of Germany, we have a small part of the Netherlands, that's the stone quarry there. But the castle you see right next to it is Sunik Castle. And this was home to the Lord of Sunik, one of the robber barons. Now this castle dates back to about a thousand years ago. And now the robber barons, this is before Germany was unified Germany, they used to enjoy a life of uh, pillaging, just to take whatever they wanted. And the Lord of Sunik, was a very cold-hearted lord. Uh, he was very, very boastful as well. He took whatever he wanted. And he was a little bit jealous of a nearby lord. This is Hans of Fustenberg. Fustenberg Castle is just a few kilometers away. Now, Hans of Fustenberg was the finest marksman along the whole of the River Rhine. And the lord of Sunik was rather jealous of this fact. So he challenged Hans of Fustenberg to a duel. Hans of Fustenberg had said, no, that's okay, thank you very much. However, the Lord of Sunnik sweetened the deal. He offered a chest full of treasure, gold and jewelry. So Hans of Fustenberg agreed, and he came along to Sunnik Castle uh, with his two most trusted knights. As soon as he arrived, there the gates of Sunnik Castle. His two trusted knights were shot uh, with arrows. So Hans of Fustenberg thought, well, there's a bit of a problem here. However, he carried on into Sunik Castle as he had no choice, and then he started to uh, have get ready for the duel. The duel, however, was not with arrows, had been originally promised. It was with swords. Now, Hansa Fustenberg was great with an arrow, but not so good with a sword. So eventually, the Lord of Sunik won. And instead of just uh, reaping the rewards and uh, boasting about 
in defeating Hans of Fustenberg, he decided to keep Hans of Fustenberg as his prize. Uh, and so uh, Hans of Fustenberg was imprisoned there in Sunic Castle. And to make sure Hans of Fustenberg could never uh, draw an arrow again, the Lord of Sunic had Hans of Fustenberg's eyes burnt out. So he kept him there in Sunic Castle. And his prized possessions he used to parade during uh, his lavish parties. So one such party, he said, really my most trusted possession. So Hans of Fustenberg was led out into the banquet hall, where in front of all the party goers, the Lord of Sunic said, this was supposed to be the most famous marksman along the River Rhine. Hans of Fustenberg, if you can shoot this goblet as I throw it into the air, I will grant you your freedom. Now remember, Hans of Fustenberg had his eyes put out, but he was willing to give it a go to ensure his freedom. So Hans of Fustenberg was helped onto a table and given a loaded crossbow. The Lord of Sunak had a goblet in his hand and he shouted, shoot! And indeed, Hans of Fustenberg did shoot. However, he did not hit the goblet at all. Instead, he hit the Lord of Sunak right in his throat. The party goers fled from Sunak Castle and it is alleged that Hans of Fustenberg made it out of the castle and managed to get home to Fustenberg Castle. 